day. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the new church as normal as we gather uh, as a community online. We're excited to start with you today. A, a series of talks, teachings, whatever you want to call them, for the next few weeks is we're going to take a look at some of the greatest songs ever written about trust. We'll just call them songs of trust in a season of chaos. And I don't know about you, but isn't it hard to believe that just eight days ago, <laughs> We met in the church sanctuary and it feels like eight years ago. I'm pretty sure that's how your life feels. So because we know that some of you are still coming in late and that's what's gonna happen, I, I wanna ask you if you're watching with your family, uh, would you just take a couple of seconds and just ask everybody around the room, uh, watch your favorite animal, or if you should know that, tell them what their favorite animal is. And if you're watching by yourself online, would you just post, uh, watch your favorite animal, and then uh, we'll go on with the teaching. Pastor Tim, what's your favorite animal? Uh, the beluga whale. Ooh, nice. And you? Probably a monkey. Monkey? <laughs> well, we actually even uh, asked our daughters, and so uh, they gave us some answers, and so we're gonna let you have a chance just to uh, look at their really short answers, what our daughter's favorite animals were, or are. This is my favorite animal. Say hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Lydia, what's your favorite kind of animal? My favorite animals are my niece and nephew dog. Our favorite animal is our dog, Onyx. What's your favorite animal? Pigs and cows and mooses. I'm pretty sure my guess is going to be that nobody either put on our social media sites or in your room uh, answered sheep. Because, you know, sheep, although they're cute and adorable, uh, I think we all know that they're nothing but a walking appetizer. They can't defend themselves. They can't take care of themselves. But in the greatest song of trust that was ever recorded, Psalm 23, David paints a picture of a shepherd and a sheep, and it's about a relationship. And so today, as we're going through a confusing time, and we don't know what's going to happen three minutes from now, let alone three days from now, and what the conditions in our country, our state, or our city are going to be, I want us to just zero in on this teaching from Psalm 23, this great song, and I want us to see four locations, four locations that God promises to take us, and with each location, there's a desired and expected response, and so I'm going to talk about the location, I'm going to talk about the expected response, and then Pastor uh, Jed's just going to give you some real practical things that you can start doing as a family, because I think God's going to lead us at this time to these four locations, and so uh, this is a song written by a, uh, we think he's a king, King David, but but before he was a king, he was a shepherd boy, and he knew what it was like to be a shepherd, and he knew what it was like to be a shepherd in the world where he lived. And so the song just starts this way, Psalm uh, 23, verses 1 through 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Location number one is simply the pasture. It's simply the pasture. And this is an amazing place because look what it says, that when I'm in the pasture, I lack nothing. Simply means all my needs are met. Doesn't that sound great to be with God in a place that he wants to lead us where all our needs are met? He, he takes us to these green pastures. Now, I don't know a whole lot about sheep. I'm not a shepherd nor the son of a shepherd, but I've done some research. And one of the books I've read is a, shepherd look at, a shepherd's look at Psalm 23. And in that book, this shepherd says that there are only two times that he knows that sheep ever lie down. And the first one is when they're completely full and satisfied. And the second one is when they're totally secure. How amazing is that? That God's going to take us to a place, in a place of uncertainty, in a time of chaos, in a time of confusion, to a place where we are absolutely satisfied, where we lack nothing, and we feel confident, and we are secure. And I don't know about you, but I just want to know, how do I get to hang out there? How do I find that place? Well, David says, the Lord is my shepherd. And so I'm sorry to tell you, the implication is that you and I, we're nothing but sheep. Hmm. And the sheep can't find their own way to the green pasture. The sheep have to be led. So to put it bluntly, you want to find the green pasture? You're not going to find it on your own. You're going to have to let the Lord lead you. So what's the required response in this pasture? Very simply, it's humility. To get to the green pasture, we have to humble ourselves and say, okay, God, we're in a time of chaos and confusion. I need you to lead me. I will submit to your leadership. I'll let you take me to the place that only you know. God, take me to the green pasture. Here's a picture of what you have in your mind of the green pasture. So take a look at this. But as you're looking at that, I hate to disappoint you. That's a green pasture in Scotland, but that's what we have in mind as a green pasture. Here's the reality. 
Here's the wilderness that David led his sheep through. It's the Judean wilderness right outside of Bethlehem. And only a shepherd who knows the lay of the land knows in this desert, in this darkness, where the green pasture is. And so out of humility, we have to follow. Pastor Wilbur is going to talk to you about a few ways we can humble ourselves in front of God right now in this season. Yeah, I love that first opening uh, line there. Don't miss that. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. We think about sheep. Sheep are defenseless. Uh, they can't fight off the wolves or uh, their enemies, their attackers. Uh, in fact, their best attribute is they're natural warriors. Does that sound familiar to you? Hmm. In fact, when they're led to a stream that is, that is fast flowing, uh, they can, their wool can easily get wet and they can easily drown. And so when it says that he leads them to peaceful streams, the shepherd is leading them to a place, even, even where they could drown, it is a peaceful place. It's not a rushing water, it's a peaceful stream and they can rest in that. Are you allowing God to lead you to rest in this season? We, we look at this and we see that uh, their natural reaction is to be afraid. How are you, how are you shifting your focus from, from fear and worry in this season to a shepherd who can lead you into rest? And so we just want to encourage you. It starts very simply. You're not going to find the green pasture, the still waters by yourself. You have to humble yourself. And after we humble ourselves, he takes us to another place. The second location, he says, he guides me along right paths for his namesake. The second place he takes us, he takes us to the path. What in the world is the path? If you understand the scriptures and you dig into it, the, the Hebrews had this constant understanding that, that the path was the, the word of God. Look with me at Psalm 119, 35. It says, direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Direct me in the path of your commands. So the understanding here in this, in this shepherd imagery that they're going to walk the path that the shepherd lays out for them, the path that our shepherd has laid out for us is going to be found in the word of God. And so we look back on uh, this 2020 season, these 10, 11, 12 weeks of 2020 that we've been through, and, and we look back with hindsight, and it's no mistake that in February that God had us getting intentional about getting through His Word so that we would be ready because it's in His Word. That's the path we need to be on. So what's the required response if we're on the path? The required response, very simply, is obedience. What is, how are you spending time in God's Word, and what's He telling you to do, and how are you taking it in? How are you letting God's Word in and letting it root and letting it grow? Because here's the deal. I don't know about you, but especially in times like this, there are times I just don't want to do what God's Word says. There are times I want to take it in my own control and take it, take it and do it my own way. In fact, God knows that, and that's why Isaiah the prophet says this in Isaiah chapter 53. He says, we all like sheep have gone astray. We've each turned and gone our own way. And friends, it's really easy to nibble your way lost. If you're not being faithful, not being humble, and, and, and getting to the green pasture. But the only way to the green pasture is through the Word of God, and that requires obedience. Can I just ask you, where right now are you finding yourself tempted to get off the path? Maybe you have more access to social media now because you have more time, you're working from home and all those kind of things, and, and you just think it's going to be an innocent reconnection with somebody from your past, but it's going to lead to something, and you, and you know that. Maybe that's even what you're wanting, or, or maybe you just find yourself with too much time on your hands, and maybe you're worrying too much about finances or any kinds of things. I don't know, but just where are you tempted to nibble your way lost? To be on the right path requires obedience to the Word of God. Yeah, even in this season, when we are told to social distance ourselves. We look at sheep and they are a social creature. They like to be around other uh, sheep in the flock. And so even in the picture of when they are, are grazing, if they can't see other sheep, they start to worry, they start to fear, they start to uh, get anxious. And like we went back to, sheep are natural warriors. And so I wonder, as we look at this, as we nibble our way off of the path, as we nibble our way away from the flock, how does that fear, how does that, how does that worry come in? We see here that, that, just like Pastor said, we all go astray. We all go astray from the flock. One of the ways that we want to stay connected at Miami Valley Church is getting intentional about being in a group. We've been talking about it for years now, about getting in a group setting, being surrounded by a flock, a, a, a group of people around you. 
that can hold you accountable, that can pray for you, that can, that can serve one another, that can be right there when life is difficult because we know there are gonna be times in life where it just seems like chaos. One of the ways that we are staying connected here at Miami Valley Church is we're gonna roll out something uh, that is brand new. We are gonna uh, put everyone into these small groups. Maybe it's uh, eight, 10 people, whatever it is, we are gonna get intentional about, about reaching out to each other weekly. Hey, how are you doing? Are, are you doing okay? Do you have any needs that can be met? How can we pray for you? I think that, that staying together is going to make us stronger together because we are better together. And so we're gonna encourage you uh, to have a chance to pick your group, but just know we are not encouraging. In fact, we cannot endorse any small groups that get together. You cannot do that physically. You have to find ways to do that with technology. And that's why we're just going to assign people so that you're checked up on and so that you're taken care of. God's word tells us, I don't know if you know this, that one of the pictures of the pastor in the church is a shepherd. And God tells us we have to know the condition of our flock. And the way that we're going to do that is having you uh, in a group. So I have to humble myself to get to the green pasture. I have to obey to stay on the path. But the third location is this. He says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and their staff, they comfort me. The valley, the valley in the land of Israel and the Judean wilderness is dark and it's dangerous and it's, it's windy and, and you might get attacked just as you're around the corner. And so it's important for the sheep to be able to stay close. It's those times when you're vulnerable. Have you ever felt that the situation was dark and scary because you don't know what's right around the next corner? You don't know what's waiting for you? What, what's, what's interesting here is, is the shepherd says, uh, the, says, your rod and your staff, they come for me. It's, it's two implements. Here's a picture of a, of a rod, and it, and it looks like kind of what we'd call a billy club. I'd never seen this before until I was really digging through this. And, and here's, the, here's the picture of the, of the shepherd's staff. What I need you to see is that the shepherd holds a rod in one hand beating off the enemy that's trying to defeat you and a staff in the other hand pulling you as close to his, his chest and his bosom as he can get you. What an amazing picture. Your rod and your staff, they come from me because he's fighting off the enemy and he's holding me close. And so in this season, when we don't know everything there is anywhere close to this virus, we don't know what's around the next corner, and we don't know what's going to be required of us, I just want you to know the Lord is your shepherd. And in this dark valley, what's the response here? The response here says, I will fear no evil. Does that just mean buck up and get through it and find out all the information you can? No, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It says, I will fear no evil because you are with me. It's about God's presence. And this requires, the required response in the valley is trust that the shepherd's got the rod to beat off the enemy. He's got the staff to hold you close. He's got your best interest in mind and he's gonna protect you. And that is all about the relationship. And how do you develop that relationship in the midst of the valley? That's good. Uh, the verse that God has put on our hearts this decade is trust the Lord and do good. If we go back to the illustration of the sheep and the shepherd, even when you're going through that valley and uh, the shepherd might just be around the corner and the sheep loses sight of the shepherd, they can still be comforted by his voice. Even when they hear his voice, but they cannot see him, they are comforted. They have peace knowing that he is right there with them. If we lose his voice in our lives, where do you turn to? I think it goes back to, to spending time in his word, knowing his voice, building that relationship. That's where trust happens, is knowing him spending time with him. And one of the ways that we want to do that is continuing praying together as a church. Uh, every Tuesday night in this building, we prayed together and we want to continue that because if we're not spending time communicating with him, talking to him, but also listening to him, listening to his voice and what he wants to speak to us, that is how we can apply this to our lives. And we're going to continue to pray together, not in this building, but we're going to invite you onto like a Skype call or a Zoom call so that we can see each other's eyeballs and we can just pray together. And Dick Fultz is going to uh, be sharing with us some devotional thoughts. He's been leading that. And so we're just excited to continue Tuesday night. Be on the lookout for more of that information. So he, tell you, he wants to take me to the green pasture. It's going to take me on a path of obedience to his word. It's going to take me on a path of trust through the valley. But now the fourth location, the imagery shifts. It says this in verse five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. It shifts from this valley, it shifts to a house, it shifts to a table. 
a place that's prepared for us. It's, it's talking about eternity with God, and he's prepared everything that we need. It's, it's, it's abundant hospitality. He anoints my head with oil. It's like I've been out, and I, he wants to make sure I, I'm refreshed when I get to the table. Uh, my cup overflows. Have you ever been to one of those fancy restaurants where you, you can't out-drink the server? That You've got a water glass, and they fill it up after you take a drink, or a wine glass, and they fill it up. You just can't empty it. That's the picture here. It's an invitation. So what's the response that's required here? What's the response? It's very simple. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The response very simply is stay. Don't run away. Trust God's going to take you where you want to go. And in this season, especially when there's fear and all of these kind of things, before we make it to the green pasture, before we get it to the table, we want to run away. And God simply says, stick around, stay close, don't run away. Yeah, he says he has prepared a place for us. Even when our enemies surround us, even when our world is in pure chaos, he says, hey, come stay in my house. Come live with me. Let me live in you. And I just think it's a beautiful picture of the shepherd that we have, the, the perfect shepherd that we have, the comforter who wants to give you peace, who wants to lead you, who wants to take you to green pastures, who is going to lead you on the right path, who's going to lead you through the valley, and who is going to invite you into his home. And so the reality is, as we come to the end of this beautiful song of trust and this season of chaos, is he wants to take you to the green pasture and requires humility. God lead me. He wants to lead you on the path that requires obedience to his word. He wants to lead you through the valley that requires trusting him to protect and provide. And he ultimately wants to get you to his table. But you have to stay the course. And some of you, you're already running away. But I want you to see this one last thing. It says, surely goodness and mercy will pursue me, follow me. It's a, it's a hunter's word. It's a hunter who hunts down his prey. God is on pursuit of you. Even if you run, he's going to follow you with his goodness and mercy. So in this season, where do you need to focus today? Do you just need to start and humble yourself? Do you need to get in God's word and obey? Do you need to develop that relationship to trust in his word and through prayer? Do you need to just stay the course? Friends, that's God's call in our life. Father, we thank you for the chance we've had to be together this morning. Help us in this changing world of chaos to know what to do. Father, protect, provide. We come to you. We humble ourselves. We want you to lead us. We want to be in your word so that we can obey. We want to pray and talk to you so that we can have that trust. And God, we look forward to the day when we're at your table and goodness and mercy has caught us. May we stay the course in Jesus' name. Hey, be on the lookout on our social media sites for information of the things we've talked about, how we can study the Bible together, how we can pray together, how you can be in a group and connect with God's people. We love you. We look forward to helping you take the next step on your spiritual journey. God bless you. We'll see you this week. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, you can email them to nextstepsatmiamivalley.org. Make sure you subscribe and like and share this video on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow the church at My Miami Valley. If you want any more truth bombs from Jed and Tim, you can check out the video archive on our YouTube channel. And just remember, the church never closes. And wash your hands, people.